Come towards the bird, Brian. Whoa, whoa. Hi folks, welcome to Bird Dogs Afield. You know, if you're a bird dog enthusiast, you're certainly familiar with the pointer breed. And if you're familiar with pointers, why then you're familiar, I'm sure, with the L. Hugh bloodline. The L. Hugh bloodline was founded by Bob Whaley many years ago. Uh, Bob passed away in 2002. A lot of things have happened to the bloodline since Bob's passing. And I personally wanted to know just where we are with the name and the bloodline today. So I went to Craig Doherty at Wild Apple Kennel, and Craig knew Bob Whaley well, got one of his original L. Hugh dogs directly from Bob. Craig knows Mel Feifel, who carried on the bloodline for a while. So Craig was a natural choice to go to and talk to about the bloodline. So this is a episode we've titled The Last of the L. Hughes. It's in two parts. So you want to watch both parts. In the first part, why we show puppies out of Charlie, and that's the son of Snakefoot, believe it or not, and, uh, and we get commentary from Craig about both the bloodline and the name. And then the second part, you know, should watch both parts, the second part shows more dog work, L. Hugh dog work, and some finishing comments from Craig. So please watch both parts. I think you're going to enjoy it very much. Thanks for watching. Bird Dogs Afield, presented by Native Performance Dog Food, providing performance diets for the canine athlete and brought to you in part by RST, manufacturers of short chamber low pressure shot shells, Mud River Dog Products, fundamentally changing the expectations of the hunter and dog enthusiast. Pete Shoe Dryer, inventor of the footwear dryer, takes on the new sense of foot odor. Thorough Good, job fitted footwear, handcrafted in America since 1892. Visit thoroughgoodusa.com for a dealer near you. Merkel Shotguns, made with pure passion and reliable craftsmanship that never fades. Hi, folks. Well, we're here with Craig Doherty from Wild Apple Kennel and uh, Craig is uh, a great guest. He's been on the program before. Craig, welcome to Bird Dogs of Field. Thanks, Paul. Good you, to see you again. You bet. You bet. Uh, Craig, you've got some great uh, knowledge and history of the L. Hugh line. Uh, tell me where, where the name is and the bloodline is today. Well, one question, the first part of that question is, is really easy. Um, uh, there was a letter sent to the American Field, um, signed by Martha Hayes and Bob Whaley's widow, Gaitra, and they instructed the field to discontinue the use of the kennel name uh, forever. So the name LU as a prefix in the registration is no longer uh, available. Now, people can still if you bred a couple of pointers and you wanted to, or any dogs actually, uh, and wanted to register them as uh, uh, Paul's L. Hugh Bessie, you could do that. Uh, you could always do that, but you could never use it as the prefix, the first word in the name of the dog, unless you had permission from the kennel itself. Um, and there's only been a few people that have ever had that permission. Uh, Bob obviously did. Whaley when he was alive. Uh, when he passed, he l left that all to Brian Hayes. And so Brian Hayes was the custodian of the, the name for a number of years. And then as Brian was, was uh, ill and knew he was not going to make it, he uh, uh, asked Mel Feifel of Hampshire Kennels, who had a long history with Bob and Brian, to, uh, to help out. And she and Martha were the last two that had authority to, to grant the use of that name. And uh, as far as the name is concerned, uh, two of the dogs that we're going to look at here in a little bit, Elhu Snakewood and Elhu Snake Dancer, are the last dogs 
that will be registered as Elihu. They, they were born uh, just before that letter went into the field and we were able to register those two letters as Elihu. So that's, that's the end of the name in that regards. As far as the line is concerned, that's, that's a, a very complicated situation because Elihu dogs were the sole vision of Bob Whaley. And the one consistent or the one constant in his breeding program was his vision of what he wanted the dogs to be. And so in, in some ways, the, the bloodline changed even in his lifetime because there are other people who got involved in, in, with Elhu dogs and sort of put their little twist on things. Um, when Brian took over after Bob's death, he had a different market and different objectives than Bob did. Uh, Brian uh, kept his kennel down at Addyville in, in Rhode Island, the shooting preserve, and most of his puppy customers, training customers, were members of the preserve. And really, uh, you know, the kind of dog that Bob Whaley wanted to, to uh, perpetuate as a gentleman shooting dog that could compete in horseback trials or, or grouse trials uh, is, is not necessarily the kind of dog you want to hunt on a put and take <clears throat> hunting preserve. Yeah. So Brian kind of drifted away from, from Bob's vision. Uh, the dogs were still beautiful. The dogs still had great confirmation, great bird sense, great intelligence. But he went with sort of a little bigger dog that didn't run quite as much. Um, and then when, when Mel got involved, uh, she had been involved uh, during the glory days of, of Elhu dogs in the woods. In fact, she owned one herself, Elhu Explorer, who, who was a grouse champion. Um, and she was involved in a lot of the other dogs. And she wanted to get back to that idea that you could prove your dogs in competition as well as have a great shooting dog to, to hunt with. Mm -hmm. um, and decided to, to do that, she needed to go back to uh, the last great dog that Bob had, which was Snakefoot. Uh, and it's... Uh, uh, how long has it been since we lost Snakefoot? 20 years? Yeah, yeah, yeah probably. <coughs> and, and Martha had, a Hayes had access to uh, frozen semen. Mm -hmm. And uh, Mel had a really nice um, bitch, Elhu bitch, that she uh, wanted to breed to Snakefoot. And uh, they went to one of the top reproductive clinics in the Northeast, or, or the top reproductive clinic in the Northeast. And uh, they examined the semen and the frozen semen was very poor quality. Uh, they used multiple straws. Uh, and the vet said, you'd be lucky if you get any puppies. And so uh, the bitch took. Um, later on, they did an ultrasound. And there was one puppy. And Mel was convinced that that one puppy would be an orange female. Which for us pointer people is, is we, we're going to, I'll show you one later that's a Charlie daughter. Uh, but that's probably the least popular color. It doesn't make any difference in the dog, but you know, the aesthetics matter to a lot of people and everybody likes the liver. The black and white, which we have some here, are second, and then the lemon and the orange are, are the, the less desirable. So she, Mel was convinced she was going to have a, a lemon female, which she wouldn't want to breed and nobody would want. So uh, she, the, the uh, bitch was have, in distress. They ran her down to, to the, the clinic where they'd done the AI and they had to do a C-section. And she got her one puppy. And it turned out to be a liver male. And uh, you've seen him in the past, uh, Elhu um, snake charm, uh, Charlie, we call Charlie. him. And, uh, he's turning four this 
September. Mm -hmm. And he's, he's the real deal. I mean, he reminds me a lot of all those Elihu dogs that, that, uh, I used to see in the woods that, that, uh, did all that winning for a while in the, in the nineties and the early two thousands. Um, and I'm back. Um, you know, I think the first one I saw was Elihu Cassie and she was just a powerhouse and, uh, Elihu Autumn Whisper that Dr. Calgany down in Massachusetts had. There was just a long litany of, of those dogs and Snakefoot obviously ended up in the hall of fame and won the shooting dog, horseback shooting dog nationals. So he was the real deal as well. So, Mel's thought was to try and recapture some of that competitiveness and um, and we talked about this the last time you were here that that you, you need to prove your dogs as well and you know I, I know um, your wife likes to test her dogs well we don't have testing for our long-tailed dogs but we do have field trials and we do have field trials on wild birds and and that's our best way of, of showing what our dogs can do. So Mel wanted to get back to that. So now without the Elhu name, nothing's really changed for Hampshire Kennels or for me. I mean, we still want those kind of dogs, but there's a lot of people out there who've been around for a while who claim to be breeding Elhu dogs. Um, and if you look at the bloodlines, there's a lot of LHU prefix dogs in their, in their pedigrees. Um, they definitely look the type, um, but they're breeding hunting dogs. Um, and they're breeding less and less powerful dogs. Mm -hmm. um, and that's a market factor. Uh, not everybody wants a grouse dog that'll go out 150 to 200 yards and you don't see them for four or five minutes at a time and you just barely hear the bell. They like to see that dog right in front of them. And so uh, a lot of those other LHU breeders are not breeding the type of dog that Bob bred. Um, and so I think, you know, we'll keep it going uh, for a while. Um, these last few LHU males, like the one we're going to see in a little while here, LHU Snakewood, uh, he's a son of Charlie, um, and Charlie uh, will hopefully continue to produce those type of competitive dogs and keep the bloodline going in the direction that, that Bob, or recapturing the direction that Bob wanted to go into uh, and was very successful at. So Wonderful. Let's go look at some dogs. All right. Okay. Folks, just a quick break for a short message from one of our sponsors, then we'll be right back with more The Last of the L. Hughes. Hi folks, you know, if you have a new puppy, you need to be very, very attentive as to what you're feeding that puppy. Native puppy level three is what you need. It's a great start for your pup. None of the unwanted grains like soy, wheat, corn are in there. So puppy level three, and then from there you go on to the native level two, three, or four, whatever fits your schedule, check it out. Puppy level three for your puppy. Okay, this is uh, Elhu Snakewood. We call him Kobe. Uh, he's one of three Charlie puppies that we have here. He will be a derby in the fall. Uh, we've got high hopes for him. As you can see, he's trembling here, ready to run around and hopefully find some pigeons. All right, Kobe. Help! Here! Come here! Huh? Whoa! Run down there, will you, Brian, and get the rope? Whoa! Stroke his tail up a little bit and put the rope on the downhill sides. That's good. So it's, that's good. Take a half a step back.
All right. I got him this time, Brian. Whoa! Puppies. Oh. Whoa. As the summer goes on, the correction will get a little stronger, but right now that's all we need to do. Beautiful. Here. That's beautiful. Here. Whoa. 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 Couldn't look any better. Step forward, John. All right, Brian, sorry. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, that's exciting, huh, Cope? The uh, Elhu Snake Dancer. Another Charlie daughter from a different litter. She's a little bit younger than Kobe. But also, as you can see, another nicely put together pup. Charlie seems to be putting a stamp on them all. if we can get her to find us some birds. All right. We took these dogs out in the woods. They'd run completely different. They know this game in the, in the bird field here and they slink around and stay right with me, but they run plenty when they get out in the woods. All right. Hold up, Bri. Whoa, whoa, whoa. 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 Come towards the bird, Brian. Whoa, whoa. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Huh? There it comes around again. There you see it. Whoa, whoa. I always style them up if they don't have enough style when they stop. Eventually they'll start styling themselves up. Good girl. Good girl. Come on.
You'd think she'd give up after a while, but... She just wants to go, go, go. It's a little harder to get this one to stand still. That was her sister we just ran. But this one's just a little higher strung. We're talking Elihu dogs, that's probably coming from the Sinbad in her dam side. They're just a little more high octane. All right. Hey, come on. Where are you down there, Brian? So they can get the rope. Oh, yeah. She's the one I told you likes to eat them. That was about all we could expect for her to stand. Now, Craig, do you think? What would your goal be with her? To have her broke by the end of the year? Or? I'll have her derby broke by the fall. Okay. So that's staunch, not steady to wing and shot. Right. Um, and she's a dog that can stand some pressure, so we'll be able to put some pressure on her to do that. And, uh, uh, you know, and that's, that's enough for now. Sure. You know, and then she gets some, a little more maturity. Uh, We'll finish the project. The other two, I expect to be steady to wing and shot when we go into the fall. Now, whether they'll stay that through a whole hunting season or not is, a, you know, something that, that probably won't happen, but they will be at the beginning. She wants to point them. She also wants to get them. Oh! And she's a dog that later in the summer we'll probably put a belly band on, you know, a collar around her flank, which is why I'm doing this now, just to sort of in preparation of it. Because you can see she wants to jump in on that bird. Now, Paul, that's where we had a bird last week, where she just stopped. They remember, it's amazing. Yep. I'm not putting any pressure on her, I'm just ready for... We'll let her stand for a little bit. Walk around a little bit, Brian. Those are the three Charlie puppies. The first one, Elhu Snakewood. The second one was Elhu Snake Dancer. And this one wasn't quite so f fortunate because uh, I bought her from the guy who bred her out in Illinois and uh, didn't get a prefix for her. So she's Wild Apple Snake Charmed. Um, we also have here four dogs from a literary we uh, raised two summers ago that are Elhu Black Dose and Wild Apple Calvados, who's a two-time wild bird champion. Be happy to show you one or more of those derbies so you can see they're coming shooting dogs, what they're looking like too. That's the end of part one of the two-part episode, The Last of the Elhus. Hope you enjoyed that. Be sure and watch part two. We'll have more dog work, more comments, 
from Craig Doherty. Bird Dogs Afield, presented by Native Performance Dog Food and brought to you in part by RST Shot Shells, Mud River Dog Products, Peach Shoe Dryer, Thoroughgood Footwear, and Merkel Shotguns.